Verkehr die Nummer As soon as I'm done. They were born by Caesarean three months ago, and against all odds, they're still alive. Their physician from West Germany called me this morning. Occipital craniopagus twins have never both survived a separation. Yeah, he knows that. If they're not separated, They'll spend the rest of their lives in bed, on their backs. The hospital wants me to fly to Germany and examine them. Ben, are you gonna do this? Nobody's ever done it. In situations like this, one baby always dies. Welcome to Germany. We've been anxiously awaiting your arrival, Dr. Carson. Allow me to introduce Peter and Augusta Rausch. Grüß Gott. Thank you for coming. Mm. How do you do, Doctor? My mm, pleasure. And this is Johann and Stefan. I wanted to kill myself when I learned the truth. But I realized I would be killing two other beings too. And then as soon as I saw them, my heart melted. Please, don't ask us to choose between them. Well, they don't appear to be sharing any organs, which is good. Uh, there are parts of the brain, such as the vision center, that aren't completely separated. We won't know until we get in there. How soon can that be? Well, first we have to solve the problem of exsanguination. Exsang... Bleeding to death. Uh. It's the reason why cranial separations have never succeeded. You see, babies have very little blood. And unless I can figure out a way to keep them from bleeding out, I can't risk performing this operation.
I'll do it. Good. Thank you. I'll notify the doctor in Germany. We'll schedule the operation for a month from now. Make it two. Make it four. Still haven't figured out how to save them both, huh? I'm working on it. You got them all right. Benjamin. Benjamin, how many did you get right? Nine. Nine? Why, Benjamin, that's wonderful. I'm so proud of you. Not nine, Miss Williamson. He got none. <laughs> time because he's trying to put down the wrong answer. <laughs> hey Carson, we know you're the dumbest kid in the class, but did you hear what they said on Cronkite last night on the news? You're the dumbest kid in the world. <laughs> oh, he hit him! He hit him! Benny, how could this have been an accident? Well, it was almost an accident. Um, I never would have hit him if I remembered I had to lock my hand. The boy had five stitches and his parents are very upset. I'm not sure how to discipline your son, Mrs. Carson. I'll handle it. I'm also very concerned about his grades. Have you seen his latest report card? So what happened? You weren't getting grades like that in Boston. Boston was easier. They didn't ask us to do much. Why well, ain't asking you either, I'm telling you. You weren't meant to be a failure, Bennett. And you can control your temper, We're and you can bring your grades up, too. I know you can. I'm dumb, mother. No, you ain't. You a smart boy. Listen to me. Listen to me. You just ain't using that smartness. Now, if you keep getting grades like that, you're going to spend the rest of your life mopping floors in a factory, and that ain't the life I want for you. That ain't the life God wants for you, either. Yes, brother. I'm going to have to have a talk with him about you and your brother, Curtis. He invited us to the game tonight, remember? Why don't you and I go? <laughs> Get me candlestick pot, please. Box office. Hey, Mother. Stone? You're on, Marley. They didn't need me as long as they said they would. You finish your homework? Most of it. Why do they you need you, Mother? I sit too close to this TV. You do your homework? I need help. Curtis, help you, brother. I gotta finish my math. Mother, I need help. What she need help with? This history, and I don't really understand it. Well, what don't you understand? Like, all the words. Could you read this for me? I need new reading glasses. Why don't you tell me what it's about? It's about Thomas Jefferson and the Declaration of Independence. Mm hmm What is this word? Sanity. Se self self and and self. Look at me. Can you tell me what them cereal boxes is on the shelf? Sure. I mean, can you read them? <laughs> Not this far. Can you? <sighs> Looks like I ain't the only one around here gonna be needing glasses. 
Dina, Sarah, Kathy, Benny, congratulations. You're doing much better. Yes. Well, it's an improvement, all right. And I'm proud of you for not getting an F. You a smart boy. But you both can do better. Doing the best I can, mother. How? I don't know how. Well, I don't know how. We're just gonna have to use our imagination. I don't got one. Of course you do. Everybody got an imagination. Not me. Of course you do. Listen to me. If I say, once upon a time there was a little blue mouse. Don't you see little blue mouse? Oh. Benny. Quanta, my brain's too dumb. Boy, your brain ain't dumb. It is, Mom. You got all the world in here. You just got to see beyond what you can see. What is this, a race of some kind? Betty, slow down. You act as though this were your last meal. We've got to write your contest essay tonight, Father. Oh, well, in that case... Maybe you had better hurry. Look, <laughs> don't show. I'll get it. I never saw it to fail. Hello, Every Joe. time we sit down to eat, the phone rings. I know how to stop it, Daddy. When the phone bill comes, don't pay it. <laughs> Not a bad idea. <laughs> that was Joe Phillips, Dad. He wants me to come up to his uncle's farm this weekend. Isn't that great? Well, how are you going to get there? Ooh, Joe's got a license. We could drive. The last time he took a trip, he wrecked his dad's car. Whose car is he figuring on wrecking this time? Yours. <laughs> I know what he thought, but I wouldn't trust Joe Phillips with a, a pogo stick. Please, Dad, I'll be careful. How can you be careful if he's driving? You never let me do anything. I'm not going to let you do this. You think I was a juvenile or something? When you act this way, you are. Now eat your dinner. I'm not hungry. Then excuse yourself and leave the table. Mother, come on, we'll be late for church. You all going ahead without me, honey. Mama's having one of her days. Huh. I'm reminded of the story of the missionary doctor and his wife who were surprised by bandits. You see, these thieves were terrible men, bloodthirsty, huh? Vicious. They not only robbed their victims, they slit their throats and laughed as they watched them die. Y'all don't hear me. This poor doctor and his wife ran for their lives as the thieves chased them across rocky, barren land. Oh, these missionaries' feet were, were, were cut open by sharp stones. Their, their clothes were torn by brambles. And finally, they came upon a great fortress. But the bandit king was right behind them. The doctor ran up to the front door of the fortress and tried to open it, but it was locked. Oh, only someone would let them in. No one was there. The doctor and his wife hid, but the bandit king saw them and drew his sword. There appeared to be nothing that could save God's good people. The bandit king was after me, and so I hid under some straw, and a blue mouse came out and scared his horse. And I got away. I saw it in my brain. That's good. That's your imagination working. But it was real. It was really real. Did I say it wasn't real? It's not real. That's supposed to call it imagination, dummy. Shut up. Watch your mouth, Curtis. Mother, I want to be a doctor. 
A missionary doctor, just like the one Pastor Ford told us about. You can be anything you want to be in this life, as long as you're willing to work at it. And that goes for you too, Curtis. God will not abandon you. Excuse me. I need to talk to someone. I have a darkness I can't control. Come with me, ma'am. Let's see if we can help you. All right. I spent my childhood in foster care. When my husband, Mr. Carson, married me, he was my ticket out of there. How old were you? Thirteen. Oh, we were happy. We had a lovely home, two beautiful boys. Then what? When I found out my life fell apart. When was this, Mrs. Carson? Five years back. But I couldn't leave my husband because my boys needed their daddy and I didn't know how to make it on my own. Are you still together? No. I found out he was dealing drugs on me and the boys moved to Boston. I got a sister there. Why'd you come back to Detroit? I got the house and the divorce. And I kept it. I rented out for income. But I've been saving money in a cookie jar. And me and my boys gonna move back in. How do you support yourself? I clean houses and I babysit. That's about all I can do. Nobody knows this. I'm so dumb. I can't even read. And I fear my boys are going to turn out the same way. And nothing's going to work out. I try to fight these feelings. I don't show them to Benny and Curtis. But lately, I can't stop them. I even think about killing myself. Mrs. Carson, what would you say to checking yourself in with us? Oh. No. Just for a little while. I, I can't afford to do anything like that. Don't think about the money. We'll find the money. <sighs> Boys, I'm going to be going away for a little while. What? What do you mean? Where? Just for a few weeks, I'm going back to Boston to see Aunt Jean Avery. Can we come with you? No. You got school. You got homework. So are you just going to leave us alone? Of course not. Sister Scott going to come and stay with you. In the meantime, I want you boys to do me a favor. I want you both to learn your times tables. While oh, I'm what? No way. You can do it. Do you know how many there are? That could take a year. It won't take my boys a year. You're smart. Not that smart. Nobody can memorize them. I did, and I just went to the third grade. <sighs> but it's hard work. Well, hard work ain't never hurt nobody. Besides, you ain't going outside to play till you learn them tables. Wait, mother, please, no. Come on, that's not fair. Oh, mother, you're the meanest man in the world. 
That sounds four. Thirty. No. Thirty-one. This isn't a guessing game, Benny. Benny, listen to your brother. Mark? 25 out of 25. Excellent. Benjamin. Benjamin. I didn't cheat. I didn't say you did. What's your score? 24 out of 25. Professor Burkett, I'm Mrs. Carson, your new cleaning woman. Mrs. Carson? Sir? It's the kitchen floor. What about it? It sparkles. Well, your last cleaning lady didn't do a very good job, but I do. I do the best I can. The last cleaning lady was me. My late wife was very sick. I took care of her and not much else. I'm sorry. Thank you. Sir? Did you read all these books? Most of them. Why? Just curious. Take Rusty and Wren off the post. They can stay with Corporal Dolan's family at Salt River until Barker's gone. Yes, sir. Come to think of it, you better stay there yourself. Yes, sir. What's going on? I was watching that. You boys watch too much television. No more than anybody else. Don't worry about everybody else. This whole world is full to everybody else. From now on, you're going to pick three. No, two pre-selected programs per week. A week? You're crazy. I mean, this is crazy. And that's after you finish your homework. What are we going to do with all our free time? I'm glad you asked. You're going to go to the library and pick out two books. And at the end of the week, you're going to hand me a written report about what you read. Two books? I don't a believe week? what you're saying. I we cannot possibly good. survive it on television. Well, you're going to start now. Why you waste all that time watching the TV? If you use that time to develop your God given gifts, wouldn't be long before folks was watching you on TV. <laughs>
Man, there's a lot of books in here. Shut up, boys. Blabber. Hearing the great roar made the young man wonder if he had chosen wisely. Maybe it was a trick. Was there really a tiger or just a recording of a tiger's roar? Maybe there was a tiger behind the other door and he died like all the other princes before him. That's good, Benny. That's real good. <laughs> Mother? Hmm? What's this for? I need to get new reading glasses, sign it out. Ag. Ag. Agriculture. A G R I C U L T U R E. Agriculture. Excellent, Benjamin. Kathy, combine. Combine. C O M B I N E. Combine. The 20 point bonus appears your toss up. You know, several limericks begin. There was a young lady from Perth. Limerick is in Ireland. For 10 points, where is Perth? Australia. Wow. Australia, Scotland. Well, how could Perth they know United so States, much? Right for 10 points. Mm -hmm. And finally, for 10 points, what poet describes autumn weather in Don't know much about history. Don't know much biology. Don't Pretty, come on, we're going to be late. Don't know much about the French I took. But I do know that I love you And I know that if you love me too What a wonderful world this would be Don't Excuse me. Do you have any books on rocks? Don't know much trigonometry Don't know much about algebra Don't know what a star Okay, class. What about this one? Does anybody know what this is. Anybody? Yes. Benjamin. Can you identify this rock? It's obsidian. Obsidian? That's right. Do you know how it was made? Well... It was formed after a volcanic eruption by the supercooling of the lava when it hits the water. The volcano erupts and the lava flows down red hot. And so when it hits the water, the elements coalesce. And since that water is cold, the air is forced out and the surface glazes over. And the lava becomes hard. And that makes obsidian. I mean the obsidian, sorry. I see you after class. What happened? I'm sorry. What are you sorry for? Someone unlocked the door. Look at this. It's a whole other world, Benjamin. You just stepped into a whole other world. Magnitude. M A G N I T U D E. Magnitude. Mark? Perpetuate. Perpetuate. The Fies. Feast of Unleavened. Unleavened. Un
Leavened. Unleavened. Vinny, come on, I gotta go. Vinny, are you in there? What potion had a sort of mixed flavor of cherry tart, custard, pineapple... Alice in Wonderland! Tax. The potion which Alice in Wonderland drank, which made her grow into various sizes. Tell me, when Cain settled down east of Eden, in what land did he live? Bates, the land in the land of Nod. Right, for ten points. How many tails in the Canterbury Tales? Twenty-four. Right. Yes. Twenty-point bonus. A twenty-point bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up. A leading Major League Baseball player and the layer of the earth between... Mantle. Mickey Mantle. Right, between the crust and the core of the same name, what is it? Wow, you're there before I have the question. Okay, Rutgers, for 20 points. Saunter. Saunter. S-A-U-N-T-E-R. Saunter. Lacquer. Lacquer. L-A-C... K-E-R. Lacquer. Sorry, Cliff. Benjamin, if you spell it correctly, you win. Lacquer. L-A-C-Q-U-E-R. Lacquer. That is correct. Yes! Yes! The certificate for the student with the highest academic achievement in the eighth grade goes to Benjamin Carson. <laughs> takes a seat, I have a few words I want to say. Benjamin is a boy of color. He has no father in his life. He comes to us with tremendous disadvantages. There's no reason you shouldn't have done better than him. What's wrong with you kids? You're not trying hard enough. You should be ashamed. The certificate for outstanding citizenship goes to Alexa Courtney. Right for 10 points. All right, here's a 20 point bonus, Brandeis. Identify the composer. Vivaldi. That's right for 10 points. This picture by Monet would be classified as French Impressionism. For 10 points, how is this picture classified? Primitive American. That's right. I'll turn it down. No, I like it. Turn it up. Won't Mrs. Graham knock on the ceiling again? Let her knock. We're moving. <laughs> We're moving? Uh -huh. That speech your eighth grade teacher gave ticked me off, so I went to the bank. I finally saved up enough money to take back that house we've been written out. So start next fall, you go into a school that appreciates you. Give him the new blood over there.
Do we have any money left? What you mean? I need clothes for school. You got clothes for school. Old clothes. Good clothes. Not good enough for Hunter High. I seen the clothes them kids wear. The cheap. No, they're not. I didn't say they weren't expensive. I said the cheap. And most folks that wear cheap clothes on the outside are dead on the inside. The folks I work for, they buy clothes at last. That's what I try to get you. Take Professor Burkett. I wash his clothes every week, and they always... Benny, don't you be slamming around here, and don't you walk away when I'm talking to you! Hey, Carl. You should use Carson's shirt in class as a chemistry lesson. A chemistry lesson? Yeah, because it smells so bad, it killed all the bugs that was breeding inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> they was breeding because your mama wore it. I think you're confusing that with your mama. The clothes are so raggedy, even the mummy turned them down. Your mama's so old, she's the mummy's mama. Yeah, well, your mama's so old, your daddy's a dinosaur. Your mama's so old, her birth certificate says expired on it. You got close for school. Not good enough for Hunter High. Come on. Jerome. This is my man. Give him the money. Morning. Morning. Why aren't you wearing the pants I got you? Don't they fit? No. I didn't try them on. Why not? They're the wrong kind. What you mean they're the wrong kind? I paid good money for them pants. That's too bad. You can take them back if you want. I can't take them back. I bought them on special. Well, that's too bad, but I'm not going to wear them. I'm fixing this window myself, Benny, so I'd have money to get you them pants. That's your problem. Look, throw them away. I'm not going to wear them. You can't have everything in life you I want, I can't. Really. I will. Not as long as you keep going down this path, talking smart and acting stupid. Why, well, if I didn't know shut up, shut up. All you do is preach me. Shut up. You can buy whatever you want. You pay the bills. You pay the bills next month. I'll bring home every dime I'm making cash and hand it to you. And what you got left, you keep for yourself. Now you're talking. Crap, all right? Shut up. 
You like this? You call this music? It's better than what you like. Man, quit proving how stupid you are. Don't the act so ignorant. Go to hell, man. What'd you say to me? Get off me! Lord, you have to take this temper away from me. Please, please, just take it. Jesus, it's all the world to me. My life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day, without him I would fall, when I am sad to hear my bell. <laughs> It is, in my opinion, the most amazing organ the human body holds. By stimulating one section of the brain of an 85-year-old, you can bring back verbatim memories of a newspaper article read 60 years before. Consider your own brains. They've absorbed and digested enough information to bring you here, which is no small achievement. Your dreams are all possible because of three pounds of gray matter. We can describe it physically, but that won't give a clue as to how it does what it does, which is why I've devoted my life as a surgeon to probing its mysteries. How did you do that? A lot of time away from home, my wife would tell you. <laughs> but dedication and intelligence are the easy part. You also need an incredible hand-eye coordination, which is a gift. All right, man, six, five, go. A brain surgeon, my goodness. Well, I always said you can do anything, anything anybody else, else can do, do Benny. Only, Only you can, can do, do it better. better. Don't laugh at me, it's true. Your grades are good. They're fine. Now tell me, how's that girlfriend of yours? says hi. Oh, can't wait to meet her. You think she's coming for parents' weekend? Not if I'm not here. What? What are you talking about? Candy, you're a triple major. I'm having trouble with just one. Trouble? Yell's too much for me. What am I doing here anyway? You got a scholarship. You were third in your class. Yeah, and everybody else here graduated first. My grades are lousy, <laughs> especially chemistry. If I don't pass this final exam, I lose my scholarship, which means I can't be the doctor, whoa, which is the whoa, only thing slow I... slow down. What are you good at? Huh? What are you good at when it comes to studying? What works best for you? I don't know. Reading. I'm good at reading. If all I ever did was read, I'd be just fine. Instead, I gotta sit through all these boring lectures eight hours well, a day. Skip the lectures. <laughs> the professors don't care. That'll only make things worse. They can't be any worse than they are now. Hey, what do I know? Maybe I'm just... No, 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 no. Oh, you're, you're right. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Joseph Lister. Pioneered the compound microscope and made surgeons wear clean gloves and swab wounds with carbolic acid. Newton's second law. An applied force on an object equals the time change of rate of its momentum. Formula for methane. No. Propane. No. <sighs> Finish them. You don't need to book. You got to book. Inside you. Congratulations, Mr. Carson. You have arrived with seconds to spare. Everyone, open your test booklets and begin. be a neurosurgeon, you should marry me, because I probably won't be home much. Is that a promise? Johns Hopkins accepts only two students a year for neurosurgery residency. This year, we have 125 applicants. So, why we should take you? I have good grades and uh, excellent Recommendations. As do all of our applicants. Johns Hopkins is my first choice. It's my only choice. You have confidence. Yes, that's good in a neurosurgeon. But tell me something. Why did you decide to become a brain doctor? The brain. Um... It's a miracle. Do you believe in miracles? Not a lot of doctors do. There's not a lot of faith among physicians. I mean, we study reports, cut open bodies. It's all very tangible, solid. But the fact is, 
There's still so many things we just can't explain. I believe we're all capable of performing miracles up here. I believe we're all blessed with astonishing gifts and skills. Look at Handel. I mean, how can he compose something like the Messiah in, in only three weeks? This is the channel, the source, the inspiration for unbelievable accomplishments. <laughs> you like classical music? I love it. I do too. I think we'll get on quite well together. needs to be taken to surgery now. Oh, no, I'm not an orderly. I'm the new intern. Oh, uh, report to Dr. Farmington for rounds. Dr. This young man has a disease called von Hippolinda. It's very rare and causes multiple tumors throughout the brain. He has his second surgery tomorrow and it will most likely cripple him. Carson, draw some blood. Uh, doctor, according to his charts, he may be anemic. I don't think... Well, I don't care what you think. You do as I say. Six. Don't think you're special, Carson, simply because there's no one like you in this department. You don't change your attitude. I'll get you kicked out of neurosurgery faster than you say yasa. Are you finished? Yes. Fine. Hey, buddy. Let's get you going here. Rapid. Please tell him that all the neurosurgeons at Hopkins are away at a conference. I am a resident. It is illegal for me to operate without an attending physician present. I can't reach Dr. Farmington. <sighs> and I can't reach Dr. Udverhai. If someone doesn't operate on this man soon, he will die. Go for it. <sighs> I'm not qualified to do a lobectomy. Be done, Lord. Amen. <sighs> Scalpel. Foley. Bipolar. 
carotenoids, please. Dr. Udverhai wants to see you in his office ASAP. You operated on this man without permission, without supervision. You put this hospital in serious legal jeopardy. Had this man died, your career would have been over. You did very well, Dr. Carson. I congratulate you on taking the proper action in spite of its possible consequences. Okay, come on, move, move, she's seizing. Watch your seat, too. Okay. Okay, we're here. Okay, okay. okay, so we're here. Give you something to make you better. I don't have anything. Okay. Right. It's getting worse, Doctor. Okay. Okay. Hey, Fag, have a look at this. The patient's a four-year-old by the name of Cynthia Gonzalez. She's been having seizures since she was 18 months. She now has about 100 a day. They only affect her right side. She's so frequent. She's forgetting how to walk, talk, eat, learn. She's been diagnosed with Rasmussen's. Parents have been told there's nothing to be done. It's the only time she's seizure free. She's awake, she lives between convulsions. She's been on 35 different medications over the years. Sometimes they're so strong she doesn't recognize me. She's beautiful. One doctor called her a mentally retarded epileptic. Well, I'm here to tell you that she's not. Do you really think you can help? I can try. The left side of Cynthia's brain is like a troubled kid on the playground beating up on her own twin. Now, you control that kid, and the playground's at peace. How do we do that? There's an operation called a hemispherectomy. It involves removing the seizure-prone part of the brain. What? How will she be able to live or survive with half a brain? It's not as bad as it sounds. We don't know why, but a child's brain has a remarkable ability to recover. It's as if the brain cells haven't decided what they want to be when they grow up. They take on the functions of the disease cells and then eventually restore the neurological function. You think there's a chance this will work? Yes, I do. But it is a gamble. There's no way around that. If Cynthia survives, she could be paralyzed on her right side. The left side of the brain controls the speech area. She may lose her ability to speak. Have you done one of these operations yourself? No, I have not. How are you feeling? Wishing it were four months from now. Why, so we can get less sleep than we do now? <laughs> mm -hmm. Your mother called today. She said the movers are coming in a week. She's so excited. Me too. So are you ready? For my mother or two more babies? Mm -hmm. For tomorrow. Scalpel. We are now exposing the skull. 
Put more pressure on the edge, please. Drill. Please change to a foot plate. So. Field three. Removing the skull to access the Dora. Holding skull flat for reconstruction. We need to reduce the swelling. Inserting to relieve fluid pressure. I've removed the entire left hemisphere of the brain. Cynthia, can you hear me? Can you open your eyes, sweetheart? We're all done. Let's see those pretty eyes, sweetheart. Come on. It's time to wake up, Cynthia. Let's see those pretty eyes, sweetheart. Can you open your eyes? Let's see those pretty eyes. We're all done now. I don't know why she's not waking up, Ben. Twice as long as we thought. She lost nine pints of blood, just double her normal volume, but she came through just fine. Though it might be a while before we know if she can move or speak. Mommy. Daddy. Oh my God. <laughs> I love you. She talks, she hears, she thinks, she responds. There are no additional signs of weakness. Cousin, how is this possible? Brain's a miraculous organ. What about you? How long have you been practicing? I completed my residency three years ago, but I haven't yet taken my oral exam. Are there any more seizures, Doctor? So far, the seizures have subsided. You wait out here, Dr. Carson. How do you feel? Do you feel any contractions? Okay, ma'am, this might feel tight around your arm. We'll take the blood pressure. Okay, hook up the fetal monitor. All right, this is 
assist with oxygen to help you breathe. Here you go, Mrs. Carson. Everything okay? She'll be fine, Dr. Carson. She'll be just fine. But I'm sorry to say we lost the babies. I'm so sorry. Shouldn't you be on duty? I am. I mean neurosurgery. Your patients need you. You need me. I have you. Go to work. You're late. What happened? I've been calling your house all morning. I'll make up for it.
come apart. Ben, just been told you want to hold off the operation on the twins. The sooner we operate, the better the chances for recovery. I know, I know, but they'll bleed out. I can't figure out a way around that. Look, you're the best pediatric neurosurgeon in the world. You may think I'm the best. That's why they chose you. If you can't find a solution, no one can. Times, huh? You and me in the kitchen doing dishes after dinner. Except in Detroit, we didn't have a dishwasher. Well, yes, we did. <laughs> looking at her. So proud of my boys. Curtis, an engineer, you a doctor. You still think about them Siamese twins, aren't you? Sometimes I feel like... I don't know, Mother. Like a faucet that's all dried up. I felt that way plenty of times. Thing is, you got to find out what's blocking it and move that thing out the way. I don't know what's blocking it. Sure you do. You may not be able to bring back your babies by saving these. But even if you fail, at least you did something. Oh, Benny. You got all the world in here. You just got to see beyond what you can see. Hmm? Yeah, come on. Mm -hmm. Mark, where it go? First off, we'll need to have the room wired with emergency power in case there's an electrical failure. Then we'll need two of everything, two anesthesia monitors, two heart-lung machines, enough people on each team to cover both babies. We'll need an anesthesiology team, a team of cardiac surgeons, a team of plastic surgeons, a team of neurosurgeons. And we'll need to figure out how to fit all 50 of us into one operating room. Each team must rehearse their respective procedures step by step, and each team must develop scenarios for the worst possible things that could happen. If one baby dies, we need to separate him as fast as possible and give all shared tissue to the surviving twin. Cardiothoracic will start their procedures at 6 a.m. Okay. Hello again, Peter, Augusta. Welcome to Johns Hopkins. Your son's blood vessels are like tiny faucets with only so much blood to lose. Now, if we can turn off the faucets, 
we can keep your sons from bleeding. The only way to do this is to stop their hearts. Stop their It's not a new procedure. It's been used by cardiovascular surgeons for years. It's just never been applied in a situation like this. Now, we can do it in infants for an hour without causing brain damage. But that hour is critical. Why? What happens in that hour? We'll stop their hearts, then spend that hour reconstructing all the blood vessels so that when their hearts start again, there won't be any life-threatening loss of blood. All in one hour? Which is why we've rehearsed and rehearsed, and why we need to pray. You pray, Doctor? Every day. to be used later as vascular tissue. Cardio is done. All yours, Ben. I've opened the door and revealed the venous sinus that they share. I'm going to start separation now, starting below the torque. There's a lot of bleeding. Close it up. We'll try a different area. Vital signs are stable. Like a lake of blood. It's huge. Stitch. We have to start hypothermic arrest. Ben, we can't stop the hearts right now. We haven't finished separating all the veins. If we do it now, it'll cut too deeply into our hour. If we don't stop the hearts, they'll bleed out. Start cooling the blood. Cooling. Prepare to inject the saline coolant solution to replace the blood. Aortic cross clamp. Cardioplegic needle. Blood cooling to 20 degrees. The hearts are stopped. Turn off the heart-lung machine. Okay, we have one hour to finish separation, rebuild the separate veins, and reconstruct the torcula. Pick up. Bipolar. More suction, please. Dr. Wong, call the page operator. I'm now separating the sagittal sinus. Okay, prepare for separation. Set. I'll break them. All right, on my mark. Three, two, one, separate. Slowly. Easy. Get ready with the drapes. Make sure we don't contaminate the field. Go ahead, hang it. Adjust that light, please. You got the drink, too. 
Anesthesia, how does it look? Give us a few minutes, man. Start the restructuring of the torcula. This is taking three times as long as I thought. It's just too darn small. Pressure's coming down, Ben. Done with vascular reconstruction. Turn on the pump. Yes, doctor. Start rewarming the blood. Yes, doctor. Warming the blood. I don't think I can do it in time. One minute, 30 seconds, doctor. You don't need the book. You got the book inside you. Done. Start the pumps. Warm the blood. Starting the pumps. Get ready to start the heart, baby one. Paddles in, baby two. Clear, baby one. Okay. Do it. Baby two. Charge to ten. Clear. All right, do it. Looks like sinus rhythm. Start closing up the chest. Closing. Begin closing the door. Back to long. Closing, Ben. Stitch, please. Stitch, please. Someone let the parents know we're almost finished. Yes, Doctor. Close them up. Dr. Long. One more stitch, Ben. Disconnect my light, please. Light, please. Neuro is clear. Plastic surgeons prepare to begin. Thank you, Ben. Plastic stepping in. Which child would you like to see first? <gasps> well, see them now. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you.
gentlemen, as we give Dr. Carson a moment, please, I'll be happy to answer all your questions as soon as he steps up to the podium. I always said you can do anything anyone else can do. Maybe Only you, you can, can do, do it better. better. <laughs> goes for you too, mother. Oh, no, please.